All right, the butt hurt shall begin. So anytime you do a video bringing up like my favorite or what I think is the best item, it seems that people either get really angry or they completely agree with you. So that being said, we're gonna be talking about red dots, specifically what I think is the best bang for the buck when it comes to a red dot or holographic like an EOTech or something for a battle or a work setup, not a safe queen once or twice a year at the range kind of thing. I'm talking something that you would throw off the tailgate of a truck on accident or maybe on purpose if you're testing it. They could take a beating, you can pick it up, it's still on zero and it's going to go the distance. And for that very reason, because that is the high expectation, there are several brands that are not even gonna be brought up in this video. And then there are uh, multiple brands that you are going to know and probably already trust that we're gonna talk about. But remember, there are different levels of optics within all of these brands that can sometimes do different things, take more of a beating, or just might have a couple of extra options that you would enjoy. And feel free to disagree with me at any time, but some of those popular names are gonna be Vortex, Aimpoint, Trigicom, Hollow Sun. Uh, we might talk about one or two others that are kind of maybe some up and comers or something like that, but we're really gonna focus on stuff that has a very good reputation right now. Before we get into all that, huge shout to Hidden Hybrid Holsters, longtime supporter of the channel. They make that sweet, sweet leather and Kydex combo with the suede backing coming from that Amish made US leather out there. They can fulfill your needs, anything from the big iron 1911s to the modern striker fired stuff. And they are awesome people over there. Copy of a constitution comes with every order. Check them out at hiddenhybridholsters.com. So I've had a chance to test a ton of optics throughout my life, whether they were issued to me, assigned to me, or I purchased them from testing everything from stuff like the Trigicon MRO up here, which is a fairly decent optic. Stuff like the Aimpoint series dating all the way back to the late 90s. That is specifically a H2 right there. And then of course, just various other so Vortex stuff. This is one of the crossfires right there. Not a bad optic, not a bad optic at all. So whether it was issued to me or whether I purchased myself, I've just had the luxury to test a lot of stuff. And I've had the luxury of being able to really beat the tar out of a lot of these things from my days in special operations to the time I did in law enforcement. Uh, from various different brands. And I've seen what some of those optics can take, what they can go through and still maintain zero and be usable. And I've seen what other optics cannot take and not maintain zero and not make it through. Because remember today is about that hard use stuff, that military security, hardcore training, if you're into that, maybe law enforcement use, those things that you're gonna trust your life to, whether you're a self-defense guy, military dude, or you just love going out there and getting rough with your gear. And we will knock out some of those more expensive ones. Then we're gonna talk about the really budget-friendly ones. Then we're gonna get into that intermediate one where I think that we all can live, be happy with what we got and still use it extremely hard. And to get us started in the expensive category or more expensive category is going to be that Aimpoint H2. So you can get the T1, the T2, H2, all those. There's several different versions of this thing out now with several different options. But as you can see, it's got a really nice form factor to it. It is very small. Uh, Aimpoint is well battle proven. I will say though, their LEDs are quite a bit more dim, at least to my eye now than they used to be. So you have to kind of crank up the settings a little bit. And I found you don't always get that battery life that I used to get out of some of my older stuff dating back to like the Comp ML3 or like the Comp Cs or some of that older stuff. And as you can see here, mine is on that ScalarWorks mount because I really like those mounts. And I bought this one in one of the brown boxes without the mount, so I get to choose my own stuff. But when it comes to something like that H2 or the T2, you're gonna be spending a lot more money. Basically, by the time you get that ScalarWorks mount or the mount of your choice that's of quality, you're gonna be right in that like 900 to $1,000 category because the optic itself is like right around 650, sometimes 750, depending on where you can find it and if you can find it on sale. But I think we all know the Aimpoint name. These are some of the most battle proven optics, everything from special operations, law enforcement, military, overseas contracting, my hard LARPers out there on the range. These things can take a beating. I have personally seen Aimpoints fall out of helicopters from low levels and still be on zero. I've also seen them survive motorcycle accidents Yes, I've seen rifles strapped to motorcycles where they go bouncing across the road, maintain zero and maintain a usable optic. So they are well proven, they are well worth the money, but is there something that you can get a little bit cheaper 
that might give you that same durability, that same reliability, and that same trust factor. And we're gonna talk more about all of that. And next up is gonna be the Trigicon MRO right there. Now, these are a little bit cheap right out of the box, but again, by the time you get that mount you want, if you don't wanna roll with a stock one, because quite honestly, it kinda sucks, um, you're gonna be up in that 650 to 700 range because the price of these optics alone is right around that 450 mark. You add another 150 or depending if you wanna go with really, really cool ones, maybe 200 plus on that mount, you're creeping back up there in price point. But you can get it done for around the $500 mark for a good solid Trigicon MRO. So end of video, story over. The Trigicon optic for 450 bucks, right? Well, yes and no. So there are a couple of holdbacks to the MRO or issues that people have experienced. And those couple of things are parallax and battery life. So if you don't know what parallax is, very quickly, it's basically if you were at any angle behind this thing, um, kind of looking at it sideways, up to upside down, whatever it could be, as long as that red dot is on that target, that's where that bullet is gonna go. The MRO has not been the best at being parallax free. So there is really no optic that is parallax free. Um, they say parallax free, but it's just because it's so minimal that within that 100 yards or at 100 yards, you're not going to really recognize the parallax in it. Um, there have been people complaining of anywhere from like a 5 to 10 inch parallax inside or right at 100 yards. With the MRO, I have not experienced anything that bad, but what I can tell you is there is a noticeable parallax in the MRO as compared to even uh, the aim point, the more budget aim points, and even the more budget friendly Holosuns or Vortex stuff. Now coming to that battery life, I will say the settings on here are pretty good. The LED is pretty bright. There is a little bit of feedback in there. So if you're facing into bright light, you're going to see the emitter in there. It's gonna kind of starburst or flare out onto that front lens a little bit. That's typical with any red dot. If you get the right angle of light coming in the front, it's a little bit worse on the MRO than some others. But the battery life kind of falls apart for me here as well because I've never gotten the battery life out of the MROs unless I got to a really low setting on there as compared to some of the other stuff we'll talk about today. And I'm not saying the Trigicon MRO is not a good optic. You can see I have one, it's on my Daniel Defense. I do like it quite a bit, but I do pay attention to that parallax and that battery a little bit more than some of my others. And there are plenty of other very pricey red dots out there from Steiner and other major brands. Uh, they're in that seven, 800,000 and above mark. I don't own all of them. I've had a chance to see a lot of them. These are just the ones I feel are most viable to the video here today. Now going over to the holographic rather than the red dot because it's it's really the same theory, the same principle, right? Put red dot on target, pull trigger. Something like the EOTech, specifically the XPS or the EXPS. These are well-proven, well-used, extremely durable optics that I would trust my life to any day of the week, even after that lawsuit. So if you don't know, EOTech had to buy back like every optic they sold the federal government. Um, not a good thing when you tell the federal government during a procurement contract that there is zero, yes, zero shift at any temperature, any condition, and then find out that your optic shifts a little bit. That being said, I think that was largely blown out of proportion because I know friends that have done extreme testing for government entities that will still tell you the EOTech has the least amount of drift than any other optic out there, but you can't say it has zero in a Fed contract. So. EOTechs are great. The one thing I find with EOTechs is I always have to buy a riser mount. I just like the higher stuff. I like a 193. I've had spinal surgery before, so I don't like shorter optics. So when you talk about an EXPS or XPS optic, you're talking 650, 700, maybe a little bit cheaper. Then you buy a little uh, QD ADM mount like that one right there on that. And you end up back in that 800 or over range. And then depending on the flavors or the options or the colors, you could be right at that 900 plus mark anyways for an EOTech. So it's good, I like it, but it's just not the first thing I go for when I'm buying an optic. But if that holographic stuff is your thing, you've got stuff like the 510 from Holosun. Holosun's got a very good reputation at this point. I do like this optic, but again, I'm gonna find myself a riser mount. They are being made now, but it's gonna cost me another 100, 150 bucks, which puts this budget-friendly optic right up to about 600 and blows it out the window. So. It's there, it's good. It's got that solar technology in there, which seems to be where a lot of things are going. It's got all the shake awake, all those things that we want, which are things you need to take into account too, because shake awake technology can save battery life. That solar backup can keep you running out there on the range. But just remember when the lights go out, you better have a clean battery with you. 
All right, so now we're gonna check out some of those more budget-minded or intermediate price stuff. And for these, we're gonna talk about the Vortex Spark 2 Solar, the Vortex Crossfire, and the Holosun 503 CU in green. Now, these are three that I've personally owned and bought more than one of. I've had an issue or two with a couple of them, but I still like them. And I think they're right on the line of something I would really trust for hard use, but I just don't know because I want more time on them. And since I have had issues with them, that's why they're in this category. Starting off with that Crossfire, it's right here. It doesn't currently have a home. Well, it has a home. I just haven't put it on there yet because I'm not using that setup right now. So this is about the lowest I would go for something if you are looking to get into a red dock. This is very much an entry level red dock coming in right around 220-ish, I wanna say. Nice small form factor, basically kind of clone-ish of the Aimpoint T1 series. You get a low mount, you get a higher, uh, lower one-third mount with it. So it's got good options with it. Standard red dot, pretty good battery life at that 50,000 hours on a lower setting. If you crank it up, the battery life goes way down. Um, we used a bunch of these at one point at work. They were well tested. Um, I like them, but there were a few that did drift on zero. So what that means is that dot did not stay true to zero. They were replaced um, and that has not happened since, but it's a more budget-minded optic. So you may run into more quality control issues, but then again, Vortex has that we're married for life warranty and they just send you a fresh one. So when it comes to running an optic like this, that's in that entry level, you really need to confirm zero on this every time you go to the range. And next up is gonna be the Vortex Spark Solar. So I am a huge fan of the ones with the solar backups in them. Um, because it's giving you a solar backup, you're getting an extremely long battery life. The Vortex comes with the low mount and the higher lower one third for that co-witness. Comes with your lens caps and they're just overall well proven at this point. Now this is really creeping up into the I'm gonna trust it almost all the time. So I did have one issue with my original uh, Vortex when I bought this series. It was just killing batteries. I don't know why I couldn't get a battery to last more than like 60 days. Send it back into Vortex for that warranty. They replaced it, no questions asked. And I have not had an issue with it since. And I absolutely love it because you can get them in green. And I am really liking green as compared to red. So this one's gonna run you about 279 for that Spark 2 Solar. And since it follows that T1 mount style from Aimpoint, there are a ton of aftermarket accessories when it comes to your mounting solution because that's the one kind of point where Vortex optics aren't necessarily the best because those mounts, several people have posted videos, they break them after doing a few drop tests, which most people are probably never gonna do, but anytime you're getting a mount like that from the factory, it's generally not going to be as durable as some of the stuff from the aftermarket like Scalar Works or Unity. But then again, those mounts are gonna cost you right about what that optic is. So if you're comfortable running out of the box with that uh, mount from Vortex, it's probably gonna do you fine, but just be aware of that is the one weak point when it comes to these optics. And I know somebody's gonna ask, I do have the Holosun Ames. I've tested it, I like it, but it's just not been out long enough for me to really say this is where it kind of fits. I do enjoy the optic and I think it's got some good life in front of it and there are already people making aftermarket mounts for it. So I will continue to run that and do a follow-up video on that later down the road. All right, that is a lot of optics to go over. Now, if you want the detailed specs on any of these things, just look them up. This is a comparison based on my history, training and experience and that of friends. Not by any means by saying any of these are the best or any of these are the worst. This is my personal experience and where I would personally spend my money if I was gonna buy one for a hard use setup. So where do I land money wise and comfort wise with that trust, thinking that I'm gonna get the most durable, hardcore optic that I can. And that is going to fall on, for me, the Aimpoint Pro. So that is an Aimpoint Pro with an SKD riser mount to give me that 193. I think the riser mount was about 40 bucks and the Aimpoint Pro itself was about 455. So at about 495, I was exactly what I want with a QD mount on there, flip up caps, great battery life, extreme durability, proven optic. I've seen these things literally take beatings, falling off of trucks, falling off the tops of patrol cars and motorcycle accidents, picked up, they were still zeroed, they still ran, and they are still in service today. My oldest aim point right now is a Comp C from about 2006 or 2007, and I would trust my life to that optic 
any day of the week and twice on Sunday. And if you are interested in this Cobalt Kinetics here, this one is very special. Uh, the review is gonna be coming on this soon because this is the new proprietary 12 and a half inch barrel and different proprietary gas system from Roscoe. So I am very interested. This was built for Cobalt or built for me by Cobalt. And I can't wait to get that thing out on the range. Video on that real soon. So back into that pro. You are getting almost all of the good options out of this, like the H2 T2, but in just a little bit larger of a form factor. So anytime we shrink technology, it usually gets a little bit more expensive, right? Or at least that's the trend. You're gonna get about 30,000 hours of battery life here with a very easy to replace battery because it's right up on the top. If you don't remember to change that, there's not much I can do for you. Change it out every year, you're gonna be good to go. You'll get those lens caps, you'll get that 45 meter waterproof rating. You're getting the, some of the best glass and LED technology in the business from Aimpoint. And again, they are just so battle proven. They've seen action everywhere in this world, um, from the streets of the Middle East to stuff here at home, security work, law enforcement. It's just, they are used everywhere and they are just an absolute favorite. Now, I'm highly biased towards Aimpoint. Now, they don't even know my name. I have no financial ties to them but I've trusted my life to the aim point since I was in the special operations and the Rangers and I love them. I've seen the durability, I've seen the reliability and I have no problem dropping these things right on that optic, picking it up and trusting those zeros and that quality. So that's where my bias comes in. But when you really think about it, 455 bucks or 495 with a riser mount, if you're into that uh, higher mount, it's pretty unbeatable for what you're getting. Now, it may not have the solar backup or that shake awake stuff, but if I'm getting that battery life out of an optic that durable and proven, I really don't care about shake awake or solar backup because I'll carry batteries with me to get that name. Now, I am sure some of you have already turned into chimpanzees and started throwing feces at the walls because I made you so angry with choosing one over the other or something like that. Again, these are my opinions. This is just my experience. And I want everybody to get the best they can afford. I understand everybody has a budget, but if you're gonna buy one and be done, buy it right and buy the one you know you can trust long-term. And of course, do your own research, get your hands on these. These are readily available in most stores where you can pick them up, play with them, look at them, or go and see your buddies. Always get your hands on this stuff if you can before you buy it to see if it's gonna work for you. If you have eye issues, some optics will look better than others. Holographic sights won't give you that starburst like red dots do if you have an astigmatism. They're gonna be a little bit more calming to your eye. Green, you may find, is a better spectrum for your eye because it's legitimately a better color for your eye all the way across the light spectrum. So look into all those things before you spend your hard-earned money. And of course, let me know your chosen ones. I wanna know what you'll use for a fun setup and I wanna know what you use for the one you go to in a time of need or if you are in one of those high risk, high threat jobs, what you turn to when the time comes. I just know somebody's gonna be like losing it in the comments down below. So you guys get out there in the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you all on the next one.